Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Autism Stories. I'm your host Doug Bletcher, the founder of Autism Personal Coach. Autistic people are the true experts of the autistic experience and Autism Stories is where we interview autistic people to learn from their stories, experiences, and get their insights. If you'd like to be notified about each week's episode of Autism Stories, we suggest you subscribe on your favorite podcast listening platform. We would also appreciate it if you'd give us a positive rating and review as it will help others to learn about Autism Stories. If you're a regular listener to Autism Stories, then you probably know that I love TV, movies, and all types of media. That's why I'm thrilled to have Jennifer Goodman and Ryan Atkins join me on this episode to discuss their production company, Lakefront Pictures, and their upcoming horror film, The Unseen. We hope you enjoy today's conversation. Jennifer and Ryan, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Exactly. Thank you for having us. It's my pleasure. And, you know, Jennifer, I wanted to start off our discussion by learning where does your story in the autistic community begin? Well, yeah. So I basically, I was diagnosed at a very, very young age. And so I have had, oh man, essentially when I was very young, I was diagnosed deaf and dumb and they use the term retarded because they weren't familiar with autism. And it was because I cried when I was held. I, believe it or not, didn't talk. And I made noises and lots of stimming, which I still have to the day, but I'm really good at masking. And one of the big things that was really helpful for me was having early intervention. So I was very much involved in the community of therapy and medication from 18 months old on. I did not have an easy upbringing in terms of my development and relationship building. Some teachers didn't know how to handle me. Things were handled poorly. I've had to endure a lot of abuse and I've come a very long way from where I started, but it hasn't been easy. And so for me, a lot of the success has grown as more education along autism has evolved and people have become more understanding of what it means to be on the spectrum. A lot of people think that it means that you don't talk, but there's actually another side of the spectrum where you talk too much and I fall in that category. But, you know, I use it as my superpower. I'm super focused, I'm narrow focused. And when I have a mission or a goal, I do whatever it takes to get there. And it has been one of the successes that have allowed me to be what I am today and build what I've created today. Now, such an important part of my autistic experience is connection and collaboration. So I'm wondering about the connection of the two of you. In 2019, you both co-founded Lakefront Pictures, which is a production company based out of Chicago. What was it about you know, one another that made you want to collaborate in, create, in creating this company together? In regards to you just asking about my autism community and when I got involved, one of the things that I did when I was about seven years ago now, I was in therapy and the focus was me focusing on what I wanted to do and what I'm passionate about. I've been in sales for most of my life after graduation doing business development and it's gone very well for me but my passion is in acting and I've been in theater my whole life and I've been in plays and musical theater and it was a really great place to channel my energy and I really enjoyed it well when I graduated college it was more like you need to get in a job that's going to pay you a good amount of money and not just be putting yourself in a position where you don't have any so I was in sales I felt that while it was a good position and I did well financially, I was very stressed and I was very overwhelmed. And for me, when I'm overwhelmed, I tend to put that out on other people. I don't really know how to handle the anxiety that I feel. And so 
urgency kind of plays into my communication as well as intensity. Sometimes I don't think before I say things and people can get overwhelmed and consider me demanding when I'm just trying to find a solution in a positive way. And the people that are close to me or that know me understand that. And one of the things my therapist said is, why aren't you doing something you're passionate about instead of these sales jobs that you're constantly, what have I done for my manager lately? Keep hitting a threshold, keep hitting a quota, make it higher. And I said, well, because I've been pushed to be in financially strong position. And she said, you're in your 30s. And I was like, that's true. So I was encouraged to hop on a Facebook group or go online and see where I could find opportunities to utilize my acting and audition for things. And so I did that night and I landed across a posting on Facebook that said, looking for a badass female detective to interrogate a male suspect for an audition. Ryan Atkins, no idea who this guy is, don't care. Oh my God, I want this role, I gotta do this. And I love The Blacklist, I love Homeland, I'm inspired by Mariska Hardigay. Mariska, if you're listening to this, I absolutely admire you. But believe it or not, I auditioned, he cast me as the lead, and with that go-getter personality, I had all of these ideas he didn't know how to contain, and he said, do you want to take these ideas and put them together? And I'm like, sure. And so I wrote a script, and I expanded, and Ryan and I kind of worked in tandem, and he knew crew, I knew actors, and we built an empire. I'll give the... I guess my perspective, but then also how Lakefront became an entity, because Jenny's actually referring to our TV pilot Conrad series. So I guess what drew me to want to continue working with Jenny even after our pilot is when she came in for the audition, and even in collaborations after that, there was this, and it's a term I've learned from her, this CLISPA. I think I'm pronouncing that right. This, yes, it's this unending NOS from a vehicle if anyone is a fan of Need for Speed or the Fast series. It just, I don't want to say always pedal to the metal, as uh, it seems that way, but it's not. But um, there's definitely this energy that I didn't have in myself that was kind of required to really bust through a lot of barriers that filmmakers tend to experience. And so when we were talking to different distributors and networks about the possibility of Conrad being on the network, we are learning that, oh, hey, we really need to have a label that owns Conrad. So at the time, we had just an entity. It was just called Lakefront Pictures. But then after that, we just found all kinds of other opportunity to continue creating, especially during COVID. And so Lakefront was no longer just a title on a sheet of paper owned by the state of Illinois, you know, for incorporation documents, but it was becoming more of a, of a label. Like when you say I'm going to Google like something. a brand. Yeah, it was, it was becoming more of a brand. And actually the project that Jenny auditioned for was actually kind of sort of my own demo scene for my own demo reel. And so we actually developed that service for like from pictures we uh, teamed up with different filmmakers to do the different short films and then the unseen came along not long after we wanted to do something different i am a big fan of horror i eventually got jenny more interested in the horror thriller genre but uh, it also came from like the crime thriller aspect of homeland law and order the black listings of that nature so it's kind of joining all forces and now lakefront is a larger, much larger entity and label for a lot of other projects. And we stand for essentially giving a voice to those that you don't always hear from. If I had to reward it in any kind of certain way. And so just different companies that offer different things. We're going to talk about corporate, but then also just different characters, either displaying a physical or some kind of developmental disability in some way, shape or form, whether it's they're getting over it, you know, they have a something to overcome or they're using it as a superpower something along those lines it's how that kind of came about and we collaborate really very well her personality is something that i don't have and my personality is something that she doesn't have and so you do have that gray area of kind of understanding one another but that's all and that's just what life is right and so um i know that marriage is not always perfect either and so neither is a business relationship all the time but if we didn't like what we were doing, then we wouldn't be doing it. So, 
And I, I love hearing about the stories that the two of you want to tell. Why is it so important for you to tell those types of stories? Well, I'll give from my perspective, Jen, you can give from yours. I don't have quite the same background as Jenny, though we do have some parallels. For me, I did not follow the stereotypical pathway of I, my dad did not give me a camera at age eight years old and I did not do a train rock like Steven Spielberg did. <laughs> I didn't do any of those things when I was younger. I was kind of reenacting scenes, kind of like not even knowing becoming an actor. So I would really get into movies, want to reenact them. And sometimes mom and dad wished they didn't show me that R-rated movie at a certain age because now I'm repeating everything kind of thing. But I was basically told in a lot of different variations that, well, if you didn't do video production in high school, you're not going to do it in college. You're just not going to be successful in life. I heard a lot of that. Went through my own share of, unfortunately, verbal and physical bullying, mostly physical. And so I think a lot of our stories and characters do exhibit some kind of boulder to get over, or like in a case of R.J. Mitty's character in The Unseen, he ends up using a lot of his challenges to the benefit of the character to continue on in the story. And we all were also shedding light on just because you have cerebral palsy doesn't mean you're not going to make it. I mean, there's different levels of everything now. It's like, even like, gosh, I had a cold a couple months ago and I'm telling you right now, it was almost like a small strand of COVID because it was lasting a while. So there's different levels of things now. It's not just on or off or like a light switch. And so I think that's what makes these characters so interesting. I know Jenny has her own kind of relationship with overcoming different challenges. I've had my own challenges, but I think when you have someone that's not just the stereotypical character that is always labeled as a cliche, someone that has maybe a disability or a uh, disability with a job loss, things of that nature, they, it becomes really interesting. My side of the family, not a lot of uh, disability, to be honest, but it does not mean that we didn't have our own challenges growing up. That'll be a different story for a different time, but Jenny, why don't you give your insight on why those characters and things of that nature? Yeah, I think pretty simplistic answer is that you can really accomplish anything you put your mind to, and I think that, that we can exploit that in a way that not many other people have been able to do. I look at shows like The Good Doctor, and I think that you know it's disappointing to see a show that they almost have to catastrophize a situation to make it almost believable versus the very subtleties that someone with autism may have. Not everybody is monk. Not everybody is severe and they can't tie a shoe. You know, I have so many people who have said to me in my life, you don't look like you have autism or trust me, I know you don't have autism because I've seen people with autism. And I'm like, then you don't know what autism is because it's very challenging for doctors you know, people like to slap things on, but I think that at the same time, there is a very cognizant, there's a very specific, continuous pattern with people with autism, and that is a struggle on interpersonal dynamics. And anyone who knows me, Ryan will vouch. It's very difficult in interactions with me on certain levels when it comes to sarcasm that I might not pick up because I'm very literal, or, you know, I'm not on time to things because I'm struggling with my own sense of self to be able to feel okay enough to walk out that door, or I'm so scattered. I got my keys at my front door. I forgot my bag, it's upstairs, but then there's something else I can't remember. And you can say that's ADHD, but it's more than ADHD because the lack of, no, of a nonverbal opportunity, like for me, it's very hard for me to read other people's nonverbal. And because I don't read the nonverbal, I come across as crass, or I might come across as intense because I don't realize that my passion comes across as maybe aggressive or intense. And it's challenging because I'm not an, an intense person. It's usually when I sense an anxiety in the environment that I'm in, such as a disconnect with another person, my level anxiety rises. And my response to that is to become more intense because I don't know how to naturally hold back or ask for help and so a lot of people don't understand that is such a key characteristic of someone with autism and a lot of the times people with autism are masking they feel like they have to hide you know when people have conversations with me i do this a lot i get i have little things that you know but i do it down here because i know people don't accept it or they won't understand it but 
Oh, I'm doing it because it's it's my way of handling, you know, a frenetic energy that is surpassing through my body. And again, another area where people don't understand the nuances and the subtleties of autism. And so the message for me is really amplifying those voices and giving knowledge to people. Cerebral palsy, same thing. RJ Mitty is incredibly talented and people saw him on Breaking Bad and thought he couldn't walk. He walks just fine, but he still has cerebral palsy. You don't have to not be able to walk to have cerebral palsy. So there are so many things that people jump to this spectrum and say, oh, you're here. Not always the case. So Lakefront Pictures really likes to bring the picture of that voice. Now, you know, you were- I hope that of, helps. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You were talking a little bit earlier about um, certain shows, TV shows, and I, you know, I think it's slowly starting to change. But the voices that I don't think that we hear nearly enough in TV and film are from autistic women. I know Jennifer, you wrote a TV series titled Conrad about an autistic female detective. What do you hope people take away from this character and TV show once it's uh, released? You know, the story really exemplifies a woman who is super capable and is really, in the eyes of the audience, probably defiant. But she is extremely intelligent. And what I want the world to see is that people who are on the spectrum, this woman is perfectly capable of solving crime. She sees things probably more than they do. She's very observant, she's very smart, and she's very focused and is drilling in to crimes and specific details that most people say are not that big of a deal. She recognizes a tattoo and sees something about it. Everyone's like, it's a tattoo, get over it. But she's so focused on proving this tattoo has a bigger meaning and she ends up you know, re- figuring things out more than other people. So. What I want people to see is the intelligence, the accuracy, the narrow focus, the ability to achieve and can achieve, and the empowerment, of course. Now, um, you've also written a uh, supernatural thriller that's going to be released uh, later this year, titled Unseen, that uh, just recently won the Feature Film Award at the Chicago Horror Film Awards. I must know, how scared am I going to be when I see this film? Well, it, it depends. It's, a, it's, it's got a lot of thrill, and it's more of a psychological thriller. Do we have horror elements? Absolutely. There's some stuff in there that you're like, whoa. But I think it's more chilling. It's more mysterious. So it's got that edge of the seat kind of what's going to happen next type of feel, which I think is a lot of fun. <laughs> I didn't really write, oh, I mean, I probably gave a lot of great ideas. I had to give the writing credit to mostly Jenny, but... He had incredible that, ideas on how to make it gory, let me tell you. <laughs> the film definitely will have its audience. The audience probably won't be my mother's favorite. She'll watch it, hopefully, because she'll want to support me, hopefully. But it won't be a, it won't be a go-to for her, necessarily. Just like romantic comedy is not the, everyone... What's scary to you, here's the thing, horror and comedy kind of go hand in hand. What's funny to you, it may not be funny to me. What's scary to you may not be scary to me, but you often do find that middle ground audience. And so we're hoping to find those folks, but it's not going to be like The Exorcist, I can tell you that, but I don't give too many details away, but it definitely has moments where you did not expect that thing to happen. And that's kind of the point. It's supposed to be entertaining. It's not going to... I mean, if you have to find a blanket, then I guess I did my job right. And, uh, you know, capturing and doing post-managing on it. But I think the targeted audience that we're looking for, I think they'll enjoy it. I love hearing about behind the scenes types of things, because I know there's so much of that that goes into creating something like Unseen. So yeah. I'm wondering about the business side of selling a feature film. As you sold the rights to Unseen domestically and internationally, 
I can't imagine how many meetings, communication and decision making there must be in a process like this. So how did you navigate, Jennifer, from the autistic perspective to not be overwhelmed, you know, dealing with developing these deals for unseen? I mean, I have to say, it's not like you'd go to a garage sale and just, uh, you know, you put a little sticker on it, then it's, you just give cash for 20 bucks and there you go. It's just <laughs> no, not this was, easy. I'm going to say that this is absolutely, I must be really good at masking because I was absolutely overwhelmed and everything was urgent. You know, it's funny. We finished the film June 23rd and we were done with post-production pretty much by October because I was committed to getting us to the American film market and getting this in front of all of the sales and distributors and getting ourselves in that place. And we were still filming things even after to tighten it, to get it where it needed to be. Little pickups, but I worked in, I mentioned earlier, I worked in business development. So I've worked in a corporate world for 17 years. They say there's no business like show business. And that's 100% true. This is a business and people need to treat it as such. You need to get money for a lawyer. You need to get a good lawyer that reads the fine print that you know you really need to understand. What is the difference between an exclusive and a subcontract? If you get a distribution deal with a company, then they go and they go to another subcontract. You're getting another percentage taken out. You're gonna get no money. You have to know your rights. You have to understand the transmission rights. You really need to be able to make sure you have a budget to get a lawyer, a lawyer who knows what he's doing and knows how to negotiate for you. The other side of the coin is you really need to understand the pragmatic, absolute relationship building and how it works when you're communicating with these folks. We were in constant communication. I didn't have time for my family. I didn't have time for my friends, my husband, because time zones were different. Expectations, you know, the minute we started getting the feel that we were gonna start to get these deals, Ryan and I were getting to work, getting the deliverables ready because the deliverables and what I mean by deliverables is when you send a film, you got to send a textless master. You got to send an M&E. You got to have a cue sheet. You got to have. Well, five point um, we may want to explain some of this because I think some of the audiences have no idea what that might what, mean. What, but what all these <laughs> I can give an overview when you're done with that. Ryan's our technical guy, so I'll let him define those. But what that means. <laughs> is there are very specific technical QCs, quality controls that need to be passed. And they'll keep kicking it back until you pass them. And so you really need to understand how those things work and how and what needs to get done while at the same time negotiating, while keeping your cast and crew at bay because they don't know any of what's going on and they're wondering, when am I gonna see the movie? Can I get it for my reel? You know, can I have a recommendation? Can I, and you're like, hold on we're getting it to the distributor we have to get this done and so it's it's a lot it's a big undertaking especially when you have international and domestic and your international wants a trailer they need the poster or they're gonna make it so for me how autism played is as you can see a lot of talking and a lot of making sure it happens in the immediate so we could be ahead of everything because now ryan and i are able to chill a little bit just a little we still got some stuff but when the documents and everything in the contracts were signed after seven months of negotiations, by the way, we were able to say, okay, great. We've already got this done, this done, this done, this done, this done. Now we need to get this done. So it's about planning and coordinating and attacking. Yeah. I mean, so I were just, again, like, I just don't always have the go get a personality that is required that Jenny personifies, but no, our, our sales agent is based out of France. And they work with uh, international distributors. Our domestic distributor, Gravitas, they're based out of, well, technically Cleveland, but a lot of their connections are based in Los Angeles. So we were talking a thousand different time zones all the, all the way across the world. But you know, with international, it's interesting. I know it's easy to put on a, a Netflix, like All Quiet on the Western Front was German-based, and it won several Academy Awards. And I originally thought that my Audi was out of sync and it just wasn't working. But um, I was actually, they were actually speaking in German, but I was hearing the, the English translation of it. And so when you do international, you have to provide what they call a textless master, which any text that goes over, anything you see on the screen needs to be removed. And so it's all these variations of deliverables.
all kinds of different files that have to be delivered so that other countries can understand what's going on, both written on the screen and heard. And Netflix will, if you're delivering to Netflix, they will have someone do it in the language of that country, so French, German, whatever have you, they would do a, a translation of that. And so it's a lot. You're not just, if you're not uploading one little file to YouTube, I wish it was <laughs> that easy. Because if you, if it's a gas station playing like the film, but they want to have it on mute, they need to be able to turn on subtitles or captions. Mine was, was be, would you be know? exporting things on 12 hour increments with a Mac Studio, the new A1 chip. Literally rendering, 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 rendering. The M1, Jenny. <laughs> A1, A1 refers to steak sauce, but that's, that's a good try. Good stuff, too, there. Okay, we can oh, cut it, that. Yeah, a feature film does require some horsepower. So luckily, I was able to acquire myself the horsepower necessary, but it's a lot to deliver. And some of them, some of them don't give you a lot of time. And so what we did is actually we started post-production about midway through production. And then we did deliverables sooner than what the deadline was. Because if we just followed on the deadline, we'd only have like a week. And for some of the contacts we had to reach out to and for the processing, wouldn't have been enough. So uh, you just kind of, there's a lot that filmmakers don't know, but someone has to learn it. And we had to kind of, uh, we had to learn by doing and we got distribution less than a year after we wrapped, which I think is pretty remarkable. And uh, how can our listeners lear learn more about and uh, watch Unseen? Well, the movie comes out June 30th, but we are going to have exclusives coming out beginning of May for people to purchase. Download, please do. It'll be on Apple and it'll be on iTunes, I believe. We are really, really, really excited. It's a great film. The trailer's going to drop in May and the little teaser clip that we also have. So how can you stay abreast of what's going on? Follow Lakefront Pictures on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, Lakefront Pics. Follow Unseen Movie on Instagram and Unseen Feature Film on Facebook. And, you know, check us out. We really have some exciting things. We have ways you can get involved, ways you can audition for upcoming projects, and we're always constantly moving along. Well, I really appreciate uh, both of your time today. Thanks so much for the conversation. Thank Thanks you. So it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much to Jennifer and Ryan for the conversation. To learn more about their film, The Unseen, please check out the link in the podcast description for this episode. At Autism Personal Coach, we provide customized coaching for autistics to help improve the quality of our lives. All of our coaches are either autistic or autistic selected for their commitment to trauma-informed and neurodiversity-affirming strategies. They deeply understand burnout, sensory needs, executive functioning, and the importance of special interests. If you're interested in learning more about our coaching, please visit autismpersonalcoach.com for more information. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Autism Stories, and if you did, if you could tell a friend foe, or anyone you know about it so they could have the same enjoyable and educational experience as you when listening to Autism Stories, it would be very much appreciated. Until next time, I'm Doug Bletcher of Autism Personal Coach. Talk to you then.